My job as a therapist is to help people ease their emotional pain and help them navigate difficulties in their lives and move towards the life that they desire. But have you ever wondered about why it works? Why does psychotherapy work? There are psychologists and neuroscientists and researchers that spend their lives studying why therapy works and what helps the actual process of change. In this video, I'm going to share what the most important skill is for your mental health and well-being. Hi, I'm Paige Pradko. Welcome to Therapy for a Better Life. If you like what I share here, please like and subscribe and join my newsletter at pagepradco.com. I share helpful tips for mental health and well-being there. I'll leave you a link uh, to join in the description of this video. Today's topic is based on the writings of Dr. Stephen Hayes, the author of ACT Therapy, and Dr. Stefan Hoffman. The two of them and their colleagues completed a mega-analysis where they analyzed over 54,000 studies to find out what exactly inspired change for people. What skill helped them the most in therapy? And the surprising finding was, you know, even though there are several skills and factors that are helpful in supporting change, like your level of commitment or your self-esteem, your support from family and friends, you may be your relationship with your therapist, whether your thoughts are negative or positive, but there was one skill that really stood out and accounted for 45% of everything we know about why therapy works and why people improve. So drum roll please. The most single proven skill of importance to your mental health and emotional well-being is called psychological flexibility. So whether you suffer from anxiety or depression, addiction, any kind of mental distress, psychological flexibility helps you deal with these issues effectively and move toward your life in a meaningful direction. So what the heck is psychological flexibility? Well, Stephen Hayes de describes the skill of psychological flexibility by breaking it down into three pillars of importance. So the first pillar of psychological flexibility is awareness. How aware are you of your thoughts and your feelings and sensations in your body, like in the moment? And this refers to experiential awareness in the present moment. It's the difference between like feeling and smelling and tasting an orange versus talking about it. And it involves being able to deliberately shift your focus to different aspects of your experience in the moment. Awareness includes holding your thoughts and emotions lightly instead of kind of overreacting to them. You know, noticing the frustration and anger versus acting out with anger. Now the second pillar of, of psychological flexibility is openness. And I like to say willingness. It's the opposite of being avoidant and rigid. Openness means you're allowing yourself to experience uncomfortable thoughts and even painful emotions exactly as they are. We allow our thoughts and feelings to be what they are without needing to change them or give them any significance. Now, openness being, means being willing to be uncomfortable while you're moving in the direction of what really matters in your life. So it, it seems to be kind of the opposite of what our instinct is, right? If something makes us anxious or uncomfortable, our instinct is to avoid it. But the more open and willing we are to face our fears and allow ourselves to be uncomfortable for those things that really matter to us, the more progress we make. This is exactly how I made progress with social anxiety. I allow myself to feel uncomfortable because connecting with people and helping people are things that I value. They're more important to me than the discomfort that I might feel in the moment. And the third pillar of psychological flexibility is valued engagement. 
This means knowing what's important to you. This can't be forced on you, you know, as your values are very personal and unique to you. But what do you care about? What do you want to do or achieve? What really matters to you? Humans naturally resist when something is just not important to them. But we're willing to be uncomfortable and even move mountains if something's important to us. So once you become clear about what the things are that really matter to you, then challenge yourself to do what you need to do to move in that direction. Psychological flexibility means having awareness in the present moment, being open-minded and willing and flexible, and being engaged in the activities that you care about. It's the most important skill set for your mental health and well-being. We are capable of doing very hard things if it involves something we care about. So if you're stressed at work, but you value having that job and the paycheck, notice and allow the frustration to be there. In a way, noticing it is actually honoring your experience. And then even though you're frustrated, be willing to move into the direction and take the steps you need to do to get your job done because you value that job. If you're having a disagreement with your partner, you can notice your anger or frustration. You can acknowledge your emotions and thoughts without acting on them, which you know surely wouldn't help matters. So embrace your experience as part of being in a relationship and try to learn from it. And if you value being in that relationship, you do what you can to strengthen it and build that relationship. Psychological flexibility is the most important skill set for your mental health and well being. You can do, as I said, you can do hard things when it involves something that you care about. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you like what I share, and sign up for my weekly newsletter at pagepradco.com to learn more helpful tips on mental health and wellness. Until next time, I'll see you in session. Take care. Bye-bye.